You had one that would count and everybody else would go high. Sometimes you could find them and sometimes you couldn't. But the name of the gang was to go seek till you find them. And the Lord said, is my people still seeking me? There would be times in the game that people would find such a good place to hide. But I wouldn't quit seeking them until I found them. There's a sovereign Savior this morning that has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He's come to redeem. Humanity. The Bible tells us to seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. Ask and you shall receive. That's what Luke 7 tells us. I wonder this Sunday morning Is there anybody knocking anymore? Is there anybody asking anymore? Or is there anybody seeking anymore? Lord hit me hard this week. When he said, is anybody seeking me anymore? And if I was to be honest and you was to be honest, all of us could say we come short. Don't we, preacher? Every one of us comes short in seeking the Lord Jesus Christ. We're living in a world that's dying and going to hell in a handbasket. And they're trying everything else but Jesus. The son of the living God. I thought about it. It's in the word of God. You look it up. But I was reminded of a parable Jesus gave. He said there was a woman had ten pieces of coins. And she lost one of the coins. It wasn't worth much about seven cents, 17 cents, somewhere in that area. I can't remember right offhand. It was about seven cents, preacher. It was just very cheap to us. See, we live in an America now where people throw pennies on the ground. They won't even pick them up. But if you got some, you don't want them, just give them to me and I won't have to pick them up off the ground. I got a piggy bank. Huh? I said, I, get, I keep them in my piggy bank. Was it worth much? But to her, it meant everything. She had ten and one was missing. And the Bible says if you read the word of God that she got out her broom and she began to sweep diligently the house. Why? Because she was searching for something. She was seeking for something that was a loss. We're living in America and America needs to wake up and realize that we are lost something so valuable, so important. The only thing that can save America is Jesus Christ and America is no longer seeking Jesus Christ for their answers and for their solutions. She began to sweep the house and she searched diligently until she found that coin which was lost. And the Bible said once she found that coin, she rejoiced. She not only rejoiced, but she got on the phone, if you will. And she called her friends. We talked about here Wednesday night. And said, come over. For I have found the coin which was lost and we're going to rejoice and have a good time together. When you find a man called Jesus Christ and you invite him into your heart and your life, you will rejoice. I said you will rejoice. Despite the opposition, despite the onslaught of the enemy, there will be rejoicing in the camp of God. 
Hallelujah. And the parable went on to tell us this. He said, what man having a hundred sheep, if he lose one, will not leave the ninety and the nine, and he'll pursue. That word in the Greek means pursue. If you're seeking something, you're pursuing it. That word means derosh. Derosh in the Hebrew is translated pursue. My God, I would have had about ten people that would pursue Jesus Christ, that would seek after the Lord, that would call upon his name and say, here am I, Lord. I'm seeking after you, God. I'm trying to find you, Lord. Where are you, Lord? Would you come to me? I'm not able to come to you, but would you come down to me? Come, I shall tell you. I've come by to tell you there's a seeking Savior, seeking a lost and dying world that humanity may be saved. Seek me and I shall be found. Knock and I'll come. Ask and I'll come to you. You can receive me. Huh? Listen, my friend, this morning, if you're not seeking him, today is the day you need to seek him. Today is the day you need to pursue him like you've never pursued him before. I understand in the world that we're living, it wants to keep us busy 24 hours a day. There's always somewhere to go, something to do, somebody to see. Huh? People are hurting, but people need to seek Jesus again. Hmm? Seek me, and you shall find me. But there's one verse that says, Seek me with your whole heart heart then shall you find me see we've got a generation now that don't want to seek him with their whole heart don't get quiet on me now huh we've got a generation now that just wants a piece of God Hallelujah. And they want three-fourths of the world and a quarter of God. But I've come by to tell you something. I don't want to burst your bubble this morning, but I've come by to let you know something. You're either all of God's or you're none of God's. You're either seeking God or you're seeking the world. You're either pursuing Christ or you're pursuing the devil. It's one way or the other. There's not a mutual ground. You're either going up or you're not going up. I said you're either with Jesus or you're not with Jesus. You're either in or you're out. You're either seeking him or you're not seeking him. Where are you at this morning, child of God? Huh? He told him in Isaiah 56, he said, Seek me and you'll find me. Call upon me. You know when people want to call upon him now? It's when they get in trouble. I sit with a family this past week from 10 o'clock that morning. I arrived home at 20 after 6 that afternoon at the hospital. Sitting through with a family that was desperate. That needed to see God move. One of them don't go to church and the other two don't go to church. One's an alcoholic. But he stood there with crocodile tears running down his cheeks as he held my hand and we prayed. Are they hurting? You better believe they're hurting, preacher. But it's sad they don't know Jesus. Sad, Brother Jamie. They have nobody to call on. Because they've not given their whole heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I know people today that will pray with me, but yet go right out there and do the same thing they've always done. Because they've not given their heart to the Lord. Listen, I'm, I'm coming out to tell you something this morning. When you're seeking the Lord, when you're pursuing Him, He's the only thing that will be on your mind. Huh? I found out something, brothers. He'll be your conversation. Hello. 
I said he'll be your conversation. He'll be the one you talk about. Amen. He'll be the one you exalt. He'll be the one you lift up. He'll be the one that comes in the midst of your problems, in the midst of your chaos, in the midst of family disasters. He'll be the one to show up. You know why? Because somebody has been seeking the Lord. Somebody has been pursuing him. Somebody has been out. Amen. And saying, God, I want you more than my necessary food. We're living in a generation now that's become callous, that's become cold hearted, that no longer seek the Lord. But I've come by to tell you something. God is going to get your attention and God is going to get my attention. Whatever it takes, I say, God, grant it. Bring it down. Let it be God that people may return to God and accept Jesus Christ and pursue Him as their entire life. With this situation the other day, preachers, if, listen, if that's what it takes to bring this family in, so be it. It's sad to be dying and don't know whether you're saved or not. As far as the family was concerned. But yet at one time years ago to be a deacon in the church... You mean, preacher, can that happen? You better believe it'll happen when you stop pursuing Jesus Christ. When we stop seeking Him. Huh? You see, if you study the book, the Bible, the Word of God, you'll find out that Israel only sought God when they got in trouble. Does that sound like the 21st century church? Does that sound like the church of our day today? Huh? That only time we want God's sister to is when we're in tragic turmoil in our lives. That's the way Israel was. Amen. But I've come by to tell you something. You know what? How loving and merciful my God is. Every time Israel would call on him, God would show up. Did you know that? Every time they went astray, he would bring them back home. He's like the one that went astray from the hundred sheep. The shepherd left the ninety and the nine. He left them in a safe place. He left them in good hands and good care so he could walk out amen and leave the 90 and the 9 he's got to go after that one Jesus Christ done the same thing for you and I my friend brother William Jesus Christ left the portals of glory came down to planet earth lived for 33 and a half years died on a cross in three days was resurrected came back and showed himself infallible to the disciples and then after that in Acts 1 ascended back to glory this same Jesus that you see go away is coming back in like manner. I'm coming back out to the people that are seeking me, that are calling on me, that are crying out to me, that have a desire to love me, to serve me, to be my God Almighty, I feel like shouting, to be committed to me. Do I have 10 people in here that feel like you're committed to God? Stand up and praise him in the house. Let him know that you love him this Sunday morning. If my people, which are called by my name, would seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I'll heal your lands. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If my people, if, the if lies with me and you, not with him. He always honors his word and he always keeps his promises. You and I are the one that fail. You and I are the ones that come up short. You're the one, you and I always come up miserably short. That's why when I pray at night, I ask God to forgive me. What do you mean, preacher? Maybe I've done or said something out of the way that I didn't even recognize. And I say, Lord, if I've done anything wrong today, whether it be in word, thought, deed, or action, would you forgive me, Lord? Would you forgive me? Huh? I'm telling you this Sunday morning, He came to seek and to save that which was lost, but you've got to turn to Him with your whole heart. 
Huh? I haven't opened the Bible this morning, but everything I'm preaching to you is in the Word of God. Huh? Listen, it's not time to play hide and seek. Huh? It's not time every time you mess up, you're running hide. Oh, my God. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Six days a week you try to hide. Boy, I got somebody's number right now. <laughs> Woo! Six days a week you're out sinning. Huh? And you try to hide. Huh? Popping pills here and popping pills. Try to hide those things. My, but God's been revealing some stuff this week. Hallelujah to the Lamb of Almighty God. What are you telling me? You're trying to get by. You're trying to hide. But there'll come a day and an hour when they'll run to the rocks and say rocks fall upon us and hide us from His Oh my God, hide us from his face, that fierce wrath of Almighty God. But he said there'll be no hiding place. So you might as well come out from hiding and begin to seek him today. While the blood's running warm in your veins, while there's breath in your body, today is the day of salvation, and tomorrow he is not promised. I preach and I'm looking around. In the congregation, can I just be honest with you? Some of you ain't listening to me one bit. You're playing with babies, looking at your watch, picking with one another across the aisles. Huh? You ain't listening to me this morning. But I'm going to tell you one thing. You may not hear me now, but you'll hear him then. I said you may not hear me now, but you're going to hear him when he says, Why? Why did you harden your heart? Why were you deceitful? Why did you turn your back on me? And because you've done these things, I will cast you out into outer darkness where you'll spend eternity in hell. You don't have to listen to me this morning. It's okay. I've been preaching many years when people ignore me. But it's okay. See, preachers, I'm just a servant of the Lord anyhow. Huh? I'm just a messenger boy, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare you the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Huh? What went you out into the wilderness to see? A man eating locusts or wild honey? man dressed in camels. What did you go out there to see anyhow? Listen, can I ask, what did you come for this morning? If you came to see me, you're in trouble. Huh? Because I'm not one you need to see this morning. Hallelujah. You see, I've understood a long time ago, my brothers and my sisters, it's not about Jay McPherson. Amen. It's not about David Jeremiah. It's not about Jimmy Swagger. It's not about the television evangelist. It's not about those that travel the world preaching the God. It's not about them. It's only about one. J-E-S-U-S. -S, Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, they may say today in our society, Happy Holidays. I say Merry Christmas. Hallelujah because Christ is the only reason for this Christmas it's Jesus Christ oh hallelujah Mary's only son the son of the living God uh, I find in the word where some wise men went to do what? seek him They were going in Darash. They were pursuing him. They were looking for him. They were searching him out. Huh? Wise men. Is there any wise men today that still seek him? Anybody that would call upon him today? Huh? Is there any wise men today? When I say wise men, I'm talking about those that will seek the Lord diligently. Those that will deny ourselves and take up the cross daily and follow Him. Is there anybody that would sacrifice yourself for Jesus Christ this morning? Is there anybody that loves Him this morning? Is there anybody that just gives herself totally and completely to Him this Sunday morning? I 
I made the comment about not hearing me. Listen, they didn't listen to Jesus either. Uh, and I'm not Jesus. Uh, and John said, don't you, don't you even claim me as the Christ. Not this John, I'm talking about John the Baptist. Hallelujah. He said, don't you claim me as the Christ. I, I am not the Christ. I, hallelujah. Because I only baptize you with water. But there's coming one, hallelujah, who is after me, who is preferred before me, who shoe latches. I, I'm not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost I, and with fire. I, I believe there's a few people still in America that's still seeking God today. What about you? I, I said, I believe there's still a few people that are still seeking Him today, that are still pursuing Him, that's still crying out my 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 come to me lord oh come to me jesus i need you lord come to me father does anybody love him this morning i feel the presence of the holy ghost hallelujah mary's baby is here he's in the presence of us is anybody seeking him today is anybody crying out to him in this hour in this moment Wise men still seek him today. Where are you going? Going to Bethlehem to see this thing which has come to pass. That's been told by the shepherds. Huh? That Mary shall conceive and bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. Isaiah said 750 years before that, before he would ever come on the scene, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? Isaiah said this 750 years before Christ was ever be born. And then here's Luke proclaiming it. Here's the wise men looking for it. Woo! Ah. Are you looking for him today? Huh? You know, I, I don't want to be critical this morning, but you know what? We'll pursue a lot of things for things that profit not. We'll spend a lot of our time. Look back over your calendar this year if you got one and just see how much time you've spent. And I've spent doing things that cannot profit. And, and then would you figure up how many hours you've spent in church? For some, it would be just on a hand. Are you with me this morning, church? I, huh? See, the Lord's kept me up hours and hours this week studying and seeking Him. And I'm not going to quit till I'm done this morning. Look back and analyze your life and see how much time you spent with God this year. Sister brought up something the other day about she wanted to let's start a fast at the church this year beginning in January. 21 day fast we call it a Daniel's fast that we've done for several years here at the church our general presbytery of the state of North Carolina sent out a request the other day for us to pray for 21 days beginning January 1 speaking of that we ought to be praying 365 days a year not 21 days I understand what he's talking about huh He's talking about some intercessory prayer, not a 10-minute prayer. Huh? He's talking about communing with God the way Jesus communed in the Garden of Gethsemane when His sweat became drops of blood because His poor glands inside of Him began to open up and blood came forth out of His pores. You, you study that. That's history. Because He was in so much pain and agony. Why it was time for him to die and leave this world. He didn't want to die. I look at my wife's brother-in-law up there and the report said yesterday, the doctor said he's fighting so hard to live because we've taken him off of everything. And for some odd reason, he's still alive. Huh? 
The family asked the other, is he breathing on his own? This nurse that was inconsiderate. Sister Megan, I hope you ain't like that. She was just so blatant and open, just tell everybody their business right there. And then when the question was asked about the breathing, she reaches over and just unplugs the, the breathing machine. She said, let me see if he's breathing. His oxygen level dropped just that quick. Well, I think maybe he, he's trying to pull a little bit. Huh. I told the family, I said, she's been here too long. Because she has no compassion. For people no more. Huh? Are you with me this morning? Huh? That's where she needs to be, preacher, cleaning the bathrooms. Break her back down to, to humility. Huh? I understand they got a job. I understand all of that. But you got to love people. Did you know that? Sister Megan could probably tell me of some mean devil she's taken care of. And I don't say that too harsh this morning because I know how people are. They're mean. Huh? But the fact of the matter is that's her job. And if she can't do it, they need to replace her. Hello? What are you saying, preacher? We've got to show people compassion. We've got to show them love. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be this morning? Huh? Where would we be? If God was the really kind of God that people thought He was, all of us would be dead in hell this morning. Are you with me, church? I said, if, if He was really the God that everybody thought He was. But the Bible said He's a merciful God. He's a loving Savior. He's compassionate. He's kind. He's gentle. He works with us and not against us. He is for us and not against us, Sister Shirley. He's my friend. He's my brother. Hallelujah. He's my heavenly father. He's the redeemer of my soul, Sister Yvonne. Boy, that's about enough to shout for this Sunday morning, ain't it, Sister Claire? How you doing, baby? Good to see you this morning. Ain't God been good to you? Stand up and just praise him a minute. Just lift them old hands up and praise him a minute. Hallelujah. God's been so good to us this morning. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Amen. Listen, I heard somebody singing a song the other day. It's one of our off of K-Love groups that you guys might know it. It's a new one. I heard it just the other night coming home. Amen. And it was talking about Christmas. It was talking about a time of celebration that people wait 364 four days uh, to celebrate one day uh, he said if you know Jesus Christ uh, we ought to be celebrating uh, 365 days a year uh, we don't have to wait to Christmas preacher I don't have to wait to receive a gift brother Marty I received the greatest gift uh, that anybody could ever give me and that's called the gift of salvation uh, that's called the gift of eternal life uh, that Jesus gave me many many years ago and I'm still celebrating today what about you give God a hand of praise and love him Hallelujah. God, you're so good to us. Hallelujah. Man, I had so much wrote down for this service today. But hey, see, God does what He wants to do. Huh? But I'm wondering today how many are still seeking Him. You don't have to raise your hand. But I wonder how many are really seeking Him with your whole heart. Huh? Not 50% of your heart, but with your whole heart. That means you give him lock, stock, and barrel. You've just said, here, Lord, here am I. You just take me and do what you want to with me. I'm yours, Lord. You just use me any capacity you want. Huh? Don't wait till you get in trouble to seek him. Are you with me? Don't wait till you're on your deathbed to seek him. Some folks do. Some folks get saved. I understand that. But me and my brother was talking the other day. Let, let, me, let, me, let me just enlighten you a little something here. Me and my brother in the church here was talking just the other day, and we were talking about people dying and, and on their deathbed just crying out to God, Lord, save me. How many of you have ever been in a car accident? How many of you called out and said, Lord, save me? He's the last thing from your mind at that time. Hello? Huh? He's the last thing from your mind. And then there will be some say, oh, Jesus. But it don't mean nothing. Because they ain't giving their heart to him. 
And I told my brother that I was talking to the other day. They were talking about people dying and, and accepting Jesus Christ at the last moment and going to heaven. I said, I have a problem with that. I said, the Bible says this. That the Spirit of God has to draw that individual. And you can say, Jesus, all you want to. Hollywood does it every day. But until the Spirit of God draws you, you can cry all you want to, and you will not be saved. Preacher, I've never heard that. It's in the book. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? Don't wait till your deathbed experience. Because it may not happen for you. Huh? Are you with me? And matter of fact, why would you wait that long anyhow? When you could be having the time of your life this morning. Huh? My, 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 my. At 53 years of age, I'm a young boy. I'm having a ball. Huh? We was on the caroling last night, man, singing, having a great time in the Lord. Amen. We got ready to leave Sister Carter's house after singing. I said, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Church starts at 10 in the morning. We'd love to see you there. If not, we're coming to get you. Huh? Hey, you're crazy. Yeah, I am. But I'm enjoying being crazy. I'm enjoying just being ecstatic and excited. Huh? I just don't get excited at Christmas. This is 365 days for me, you see. Huh? So I'm asking you this Sunday morning, the question that Jesus kept putting in my spirit, is anybody seeking me now? Is anybody seeking him this morning? Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Ask and you shall receive, doubting nothing. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? I'm telling us this Sunday morning. The scripture under that goes on to tell us, he said, what father? If his son asked a fish, give him a stone. Huh? Not a one of us. If our children are hungry, we'll feed them, won't we? Huh? Our crew come in last night after caroling, you know, and we're going to get something to eat. You know where that was? Nana's kitchen. They didn't spend one red dime. Tight wad rascals. I could have ate a burger, but they ain't all for nothing. Huh? What you got in the refrigerator, Papa? I said, there's some pork chop and collars and stuff in there. Boy, they jumped on them. Huh? What are you telling me? They could have stood there all night and said, I'm hungry. I said, I ain't moving. I'm tired. You go find what you want. They could have went back and sat down in the living room and said, well, I'm not just going to do it. Well, you just sit there and starve. Hello, are you with me? I know y'all don't do that, precious hearts. As Pastor Hunt would say, I love to hear him say that, precious hearts. Huh? No, when you're tired and wore out, you'll still jump up for them. Shake your head, it ain't going to fall off. You're in the church, don't lie. Huh? You know, can I, can I close this morning by telling you our Father loves us so much this morning that He's willing to go to the extreme for you and I this Sunday morning. He's went past the limit sometime for you and for me. But my question is this morning, Brother Anthony, what have we done for Him? What have we, have we given Him an hour this week? Really? An hour? Just an hour. Have we sat down and just communed with him a little while? I was in my office studying just yesterday and my cell phones are ringing and I always leave it in the kitchen when I'm studying. That's my time alone with God. And I'll tell him to his face, Brother Marty had called and my wife knows I, you know, I pretty much talked to Brother Marty, and she said, Brother Marty's calling you. I said, hang it up. 
I'll call him later. Because I needed to seek the Lord. Brother Marty, I needed to pursue him at that moment. And I couldn't get distracted from seeking my Savior. I wonder this morning, are you still seeking Him? Come on, sister, the piano for me. Are you still crying out to Him this Sunday morning? Saying, I need you, Jesus. I need you in my family. I need you in my life. My kids are lost. They need you, Jesus. My husband or wife is lost. They need you, Jesus. See, if you want it bad enough, you'll find it. Huh? I've always heard if people get sick enough, they'll go to the doctor. Huh? I hear people say, I'm sick. I said, well, go get the doctor and get you some help. No, I don't want to go. I said, well, you ain't sick. Hello? That's been hard, ain't it? Huh? <laughs> Man, I really need to seek the Lord. Sunday morning comes around and I don't see you. You don't need to seek the Lord. You got all you need, $2 worth of Him. That's all you needed. Huh? I ask you this Sunday morning, are you seeking Him? I know this maybe weren't how things were supposed to go with us as a schedule, but it's His schedule this morning. It's about Him. Miss Linda, you want to stand and testify about where she's got the baby, but you want to say something for the Lord? But you got some help now, you see. You, Linda's been doing it by herself, but she's got some help now. What about it, church? Have you been there? We all have, haven't we? God bless you, sis. You see, I, I remember. I pick up my grand boys on Wednesdays at the schoolhouse. And back in the summertime, June, July, somewhere in that area, Miss Linda came to the school to pick up her little one. And we had an opportunity to talk. And she broke down and began to cry at the schoolhouse. She said, preacher, if I don't make a change, I'm going to die. And I said, do you know where you'll go? She said, I'll go to hell. I said, you've known Jesus. You served him one time. Matter of fact, 
Testimony was so strong, she brought this young man right here in this wheelchair in here. Got him coming to church and mama. What are you telling me, preacher? See, she told me that. But months went by and was absent on Sundays. Absent on Wednesdays. See, she confessed with her mouth, but she never done anything with her heart. The mouth said, I want to change. The mouth said to me at that time, preacher, I was hit so hard the other day by an individual that I was unconscious for hours and hours and hours. I need to change. But there was no change. See, we can talk a good game, folks. I'm closing. But talk is cheap without any action to it. I can tell you, I love you, but if I never show you, then talk is cheap. Huh? You could do me the same way. So I'm asking you this morning, are you really seeking Him with your whole heart? If you do, I believe we'll make it. Don't you? I, I believe we'll end up in this thing one day and we'll go to heaven to be with the Lord and we'll spend eternity with Him forever and forever and forever. I love you this morning. But I want to give one more opportunity with every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you've not been seeking Him, you've not been pursuing Him, would you slip up your hand and put it down? God bless, God bless. Just put them down. This ain't for nobody to see. Is there another? Hands are going up. Is there another? God bless you, son. Is there another? Is there another? Come on, just be honest. This is between you and the Lord. What about it? While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I want to ask one more question. If Jesus were to show up today, would you go back with him? I said, would you go back with him if he came right now, this moment? I want you to know that. That's how sure you got to be. That's how positive you got to be. It can't be a maybe or a think so. You got to know so. Salvation. Is there another that would slip up your hand? I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. God bless your daughter. Is there another? God bless your son. So you're just being honest, that's all. Is there another? Is there another? I'm going to tell you just a moment. I don't want to scare anybody. Bless you, baby. I don't want to scare anybody today. But you know what? We may not live to see Christmas. Miss Walters just a few weeks ago was taking her grandchildren to school and never returned home but in a cardboard box. You know why? Because she was killed instantly. Have I seen one of those family members dart the doors? No, ma'am, no, sir. They tell me a lot of stuff during the funeral, but they've not given their heart to God. How do you know, preacher? Because they've not darted the doors. They've not called on the Lord. See, our actions speak a lot louder than our words, folks. A lot louder than our words. Some of your brothers would come up and pray for my brother right here at the front. Come on, brethren. Is there anybody else who would like to come? Some of these brothers, come on around and pray for Brother Keith this morning, would you? Come on, brothers. It's a time for your brothers. Come on. Lord, we thank you, we praise you. Father God, intervene this Sunday morning, Lord, for your people. Lord, touch Brother Keith this morning, God. Lord, you know the need that he has. God, you know the hands that went up in this building this morning. Seek me with your whole heart. Then shall you find me. If my people would just call upon me, 
Seek me. Pursue me. Then I'll forgive you.